Hi, I'm Carrie from Feel Good Teaching and I'm making good on my promise from last week. Last time we discussed what I like to do following the build phase of a STEM challenge. So we talked about the gallery walk, allowing students to present and give demonstrations, the question and answer round, an individual design analysis that I sometimes also call record and reflect. And I mentioned that what comes after all of those things for me is a small group and or whole class discussion. And that's the topic of today's video. I believe this group discussion is really important for deepening students' own reflection and it adds a lot of value to the STEM challenge. And this student reflection is key, not just in analyzing their designs, but in actually analyzing the entire process. And because of that, the types of questions I choose in this round go a little bit broader than what I have students do in their record and reflect handouts. One of my goals is to help students become a little bit more self-aware. How are they feeling throughout the challenge? How are they working together as a team? And how did those things, as well as a few others, impact the success of their designs? Just like all of the steps we talked about last week, this is one of those things that often gets cut for time in classrooms, but it's where so much of the value from the STEM challenge can really be found. It's like when we do a science experiment and we do all the flashbang buzz and all the fun stuff, but then if we never take those steps to then analyze what does it mean, it can be very tempting to try to convince ourselves that students probably processed what the point of the challenge was and how well they worked in their teams, but really we have to assume nothing. So if you haven't done a group discussion following a STEM challenge before, I urge you to give it a try on your next challenge. I have a set of eight questions that I consider sort of my base. If we're doing whole class discussions, then I start with those eight, but like a reporter, I sort of go where things are interesting and I might ask follow-up questions. I might not in the end do all eight that I had planned, but if students are doing small group discussions, then I do anticipate that they're gonna go through all eight questions. I like students to think about what surprised them during a challenge. Sometimes they'll come back with things like, I didn't think I could do this, and then at the last minute it worked out. Or one time a student said, you know, some, one of the students in the group was having sort of a little bit of a meltdown. Um, he left the group for a while. When he came back, he was really part of the team and helped them come up with their design ideas at the end. So she said she was surprised and impressed that he was able to just sort of refocus and then help them do something really wonderful. I like to find out what was frustrating about a challenge so that one, students can have that opportunity to just express it and vent if they need to. We can also talk about productive versus unproductive ways to deal with frustration. And it also helps me know if I need to make an adjustment to the criteria and constraints list for the next iteration, or if I'm not doing one, maybe even the, just the next school year. And sometimes there are other students in the discussion who can say, oh, I had that same frustration. You know how we figured it out, we did X, Y, Z. What was the purpose of doing the STEM challenge came from a colleague of mine. And what was really fascinating to me is that your students sometimes make connections that you didn't make. And it sort of makes you feel really smart, but it also gives you an opportunity to add in some extensions that maybe you weren't planning. And then my lofty, maybe pie in the sky goal on this question. So I just like students to get in the habit of asking themselves why someone might be asking them to do a certain thing, because I'm hoping that as a life skill, it might make it harder to manipulate them. Of course, I want students to take the time to look for patterns and designs that worked well and designs that did not. I like students to have the opportunity to share what they'd like to try next, especially if they weren't successful in this first round. And in addition to that, I'd like to know if there's something they'd want to change about the challenge. Now this might be some materials they'd like added, or maybe there was something in the criteria and constraints list that was particularly tricky. So this helps me figure out if there are changes I need or want to make to the challenge. Asking students how this does or could apply in real life is another way of asking them to make connections. And the big reason I use this question is actually because when I taught seventh grade and the students had to do science experiment lab reports, this was always a particular frustration. Students would often just ignore the question completely. So this became one of my standards because I don't want anyone to ever ignore the question. I want it to be very well practiced and very easy to make these connections to the real world. Cooperation and collaboration are kind of like cousins, I tell my students. For cooperation, we're talking about how the students really work together. Is there kindness? Is there respect? Are we all pitching in? And for me, the nuance with collaboration is more about the ideas themselves and how they make it into the design. Did we listen to everybody's ideas? Did everybody try to pitch in and help and contribute in some way to the design? Did we try to incorporate ideas from different members of the group? 
when there was a decision or a choice to be made, did we make that choice fairly? This is also an opportunity for you. If you happen to notice during the build, there were particular teams working really well together, maybe they did a division of labor or they had some sort of systems in place, you can sort of tease this out in the way that you ask the discussion questions to get them to share with the groups. And hopefully teams will start to see that groups that collaborated and cooperated well together tend to produce better designs than those that have a lot of infighting. And for the final question, I choose a different quote for every challenge. I ask the student to explain the quote in their own words and then describe how it applied to the challenge. The quotes I pull are usually about hard work, determination, perseverance, failure, etc. You might be surprised at how insightful your students are with these quotes. You can even use them for writing prompts, and this is actually one of the reasons I like to use a quote, is to get students in the practice of paraphrasing, and of course, making connections to their own lives. I've learned so much by doing these discussions. This time really helps students reflect on the process and really appreciate their own progress as they go through challenges. So remember, don't assume that the students are going to have these aha moments on their own. We need to dedicate the time to allow them to get there. Do you have some favorite questions you like to ask your students after a design? I would love to hear them. Go ahead and drop them in the comments or join me on my Facebook group, Stellar STEM Teachers. I'll be back next time with a brand new STEM challenge. So make sure you're following or subscribe so you don't miss it. Until then, I hope your week is packed with feel good teaching moments. See you soon.